Let's try that again. Good morning. Good morning. I welcome you this morning. A couple of announcements as we get started. Um, yesterday we celebrated the service, uh, the funeral service for Victor Peichel. Um, some of the extra flowers up front are in memory and honor of, uh, of him. Uh, I want to thank the congregational love and support for the family. Uh, the choir was here. We had uh, lots of people helping for the luncheon. Um, and, and your presence was felt in so many ways and, and prayers. So thank you. Um, also, thank you for um, the, your support of the birthday bags. It looks like all of them have been taken. And just a reminder that we need those returned uh, by September 8th. A lot have come back. If you don't see them, it's because we keep them in a different room uh, rather than filling up the narthex. But um, uh, please, just if you have um, some that are out, bring them back uh, by September 8th. Uh, they'll be blessed during church that day and then sent to Glade Run Lutheran Services. They provide them to families that they are working with. Um, when you have limited resources, sometimes it's the, the fun, special things that go away. So things like birthday parties. Um, so these birthday bags will be very special to families um, so that they can celebrate uh, their special days. Next Sunday, we will have our prayer team available. If you would like to uh, ask for prayers, individual prayers after both of the worship services, um, they will be here for you. And then just a note about um, Two weeks from now, September 8th, uh, that is the day that we return to our fall schedule. So we will have worship services at 8.30 and 11. Uh, next week it stays the same, but uh, two weeks from now, 8.30 and 11. So if you come now, you'll be early, at least you won't be late, <laughs> and you can hang out and chat and all of that. Um, but uh, it is also God's work, our hands day, and we will have a, a day of service. Uh, so after the 11 o'clock service, about 12, 15, we'll share lunch together in the Celebration Center. And then we have six different projects that we'll be working on. Um, things like for, um, for the homeless shelter, uh, we're gonna make uh, pers uh, personal care kits um, that they can give to people. Uh, for the Hubs Pantry, we're gonna make up uh, a box of basic spices for families, because you can go to the pantry and get lots of food, but you can't make it taste like anything uh, without the spices. So we're gonna, so projects like that. Um, and in support of that, if you would like to make some donations ahead of time, we have a short list on a handout in the back of church. Um, if you look for a newsletter later, a newsletter later this week, you will get uh, a longer list of things that you can donate prior to September 8th, and that will help us um, uh, prepare for that day. So please mark your calendar, plan on coming, uh, plan on staying, and um, the other thing we're gonna do is right before Vic um, became sick, he uh, asked to donate a new tree for our front lawn. Uh, we lost uh, an old, old tree out there, and he said, I want to put the new one in. And so that will be planted this week, but dedicated on the 8th uh, as part of our God's work, our hands day. So a lot of things happening. Um, you can also look forward to Sunday school start September 8th. Um, in September, we will have, uh, we will be starting adult education opportunities. Um, so please read your newsletter when it comes. There's lots coming out and lots of opportunities. Okay, thank you. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us share God's peace with one another.
She probably doesn't want me to say anything, but we're also glad that Kathy Bedford's back in church for the first time since June. Your prayers um, have, uh, have offered great support to her as she's been healing this summer after a fall, so we're glad she's here. That's great. And one person got the message that we stay standing for the hymn, so stand on up. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's love, let us confess our sin. God of manna, miracles, and mercy, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and empower us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, the God of manna, miracles, and mercy provides all we need to live for today and for tomorrow. In Christ's death and resurrection, we are shown mercy forgiven all our wrongs and loved into life. Today, these gifts are for you. Follow Christ's way this week. Amen.
Let us pray. Holy God, your word feeds your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your truth that renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated, and if any children would like to come up for the children's sermon. That's okay. That's all right. She'll catch on. Well, good morning. How are you? Good. So did you start school this week? <laughs> Sadly. Oh. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it's, sometimes it's hard to go back to school, right? You have a great summer, and then you got to go back, and now you have to stay on schedule, and you have to you have new stuff happening, right? You have to learn new things, do new things. You have new classrooms, new friends, new teachers, a lot of new stuff, right? Um, do you know your teacher's name yet? Yeah? Yeah? So I'll tell you something. Nathan, my son, like he's a big guy now, right? But when he was like in second grade, it was January before he knew his teacher's name. <laughs> And if you know Nathan, it makes sense. <laughs> but sometimes it's hard, right? It's hard to go through all those changes, and you can get worried about stuff, and you can yeah, find some things are harder than other things, right? Um, so how do we get through those things, right? How do we get through the tough times? Well, we turn to God, and we find ways to make sure that we remember that God is with us, and God is there to help us, to bring us comfort when we're a little bit scared or to encourage us when we're, when we're struggling, um, we can turn to God. Or God also helps us celebrate when things are going really well. So I brought something with me today um, to give you something that will help you to remember that God is with you, okay? So like in church, we have things around here that help us to remember about God, right? That we can see and touch. We have crosses. We have um, the different images to help us remember different stories. The water helps us remember baptism. There's lots of things in church that help us to remember about God. And maybe you have things at home that help you remember about God. But this is something you can take to school to help to remember that God's with you all the time, okay? So it is a pencil that we're going to pray over, okay? So my question is, what's your favorite color? I have, these are the colors I have, and I have lots of different colors. You like the pink one? You can take the pink one. You like the blue? I have, I think I still have more pink if you like pink. Blue? Okay. So this is, this is a very, your own very special pencil, okay? And it says it's not just a regular old pencil. I'm sure you have those for school. But this one is prayed over. And you can keep it with you. You can keep it in your pocket, your backpack, your desk, wherever you want to put it. Um, and on days where you're kind of struggling, maybe you pull out this pencil and hold it in your hand or use it to do your work. Maybe days when you're struggling over math or reading or science, um, you can check and see this pencil, hold it, and remember that God is with you and there to help you out, okay? So let's pray uh, over our pencils, all right? You ready? Dear God, we pray that the pencils, these special pencils, would help us to remember that you are with us all the time. And you are especially with us at school uh, when we're trying new things and doing new, um, new things and meeting new people. We pray that you would help us be loving and caring people and that you give us strong minds and strong hearts. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so um, my other invitation is uh, in two weeks, bring your backpacks, and we'll do a blessing for your backpacks, okay? And I, what I do with that is I put a little cross on your backpack uh, right where it hits you in the back, and you can remember that God's got your back, okay? Sound good? All right, thank you.
Here, do you want to take one for Felicity? Which one should she have? Yeah, see, Elsie okay. likes... Oh, Elsie. Felicity already has hers. I got it backwards. <laughs> the first reading is from Joshua. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and officers of Israel and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you're unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the ridge in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord for he is our God. The word of the Lord. A reading from Ephesians. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against rulers, against authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and have done everything to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness as shoes for your feet. Put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. 
not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. So somewhere in my memory, uh, a while back, there was a commercial that started to air in August. And it features a father who makes his way merrily down the aisles of an office supply store while his sullen children trod behind him. He skips down the aisle, tossing into the cart all of those new school supplies. Folders, pencils, erasers, pens, paper. And in the background plays the all-familiar tune, it's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> it's back to school season. As late as yesterday, I was still seeing families in the back corner of Target scouring the near empty aisles and shelves looking to complete that list put out by the... getting pretty grumpy about what Jesus was saying to them. And now it's getting worse because now it's getting personal. Jesus' own disciples are complaining. This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? Even the closest disciples have to choose whether to follow. And we have that same choice we have to make. 
It's not easy. Making the choice for God and all that God offers is the commitment not of an hour or a day, but of a lifetime. When parents bring their child to the waters of baptism, when a confirmant stands to make promises before God and family and church, when, it, when a family joins the church, they need to know that faith won't be easy. Jesus tells the people that to believe in him, to trust in him, means that they have to abide in him. They have to stay. They have to stick with it, even when it gets hard or uncomfortable or distasteful. It's a hard path to follow, and many lose their way. John's gospel is clear. Many of Jesus' disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. Even people among those who originally chose discipleship changed their minds. Which goes to show that making the choice for God isn't just something we do once and for all. We have to do it every day. Every morning we get up and choose to follow God. And we do this every day of every week, of every month, of every year, of our whole life. We choose to abide, which I love that word because it's a deep, lasting, longing word. Abiding in God, in Christ. It's all part of the deal. Anything worthwhile requires abiding. It requires staying the course. An alcoholic in recovery can't have that one drink. A married couple pledges to remain together for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health. New high school graduates admitted to college have to keep studying to keep their scholarships. Athletes train hard often year round to stay in the game. You accept the job offer and you have to get up and go to work every day. And no matter what our goals are, no matter how sincere we are in our promises to ourselves and to each other, most of us will make mistakes along the way. And sometimes those failures can't be overcome. When it comes to faith, making the wrong choice is not the end of the road. That's good news. According to this gospel reading, we can mess up and get back on the road later. As Jesus looks out over the disciples, he admits that following him, leading a life of faith, ultimately isn't really our choice at all. He says, no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Our decision for God is superseded by God's decision for us. God chooses us first, long before we even think of choosing God. Peter says, Lord, to whom can we go? There is no other choice. In The Love of God in Affliction by Simone Weil, the author asserts that humanity was once able to walk away from God, but Jesus' crucifixion changes everything. As for us, we are nailed in place, free only to direct our gaze. I love that quote. As for us, we are nailed in place, free only to direct our gaze. We can choose to look up at Jesus or away, to accept or reject the challenge and the promise of the cross and what Peter calls the words of eternal life that are always calling to us. So what does it look like to claim this promise? What happens when we choose to abide in Jesus? What if we are no longer afraid of the difficult teachings. Well, 
there are no guarantees that life is going to be easier or free from trouble or pain or sorrow. But maybe we associate with different people. Maybe we do things differently with our time. Maybe we spend our money in different ways. Maybe we treat our, our spouse, our child, our neighbor, our teammate, our classmate with more dignity and grace. Maybe we see ourselves in new and beautiful ways. Maybe these things help us to love ourselves and each other and God even more. Maybe that love grows into hope. And maybe that new hope leads to a life that makes more sense. And maybe when we love more and hope more and live more, it becomes easier to abide in Christ each and every day. Amen. Living together as one body in Christ, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come before God of manna, miracles, and mercy to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. Please kneel as you're able. Gracious God, we thank you for our ability to communicate. Use this ability to help us honor both the dignity and belovedness of everyone. We especially ask that you be with us as we share faithful ideas, express creativity, and witness to the word. God of manna, miracles, and mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we thank you this week for trees. Help us care and honor this creation that feeds us its fruit, protects us from weather, and restores our soul. Guide us to support the work of those called to care for the earth through tending and conservation work. God of manna, miracles, and mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for students of all ages, abilities, and backgrounds. We pray for our hearts as they hold excitement, nervousness, disappointment, and hope. We give you all our loves and fears. We pray for steady self-esteem and deepening resilience. God of manna, miracles, and mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up parents, teachers, staff, administrators, and all others who are part of a student's life. Give them peace, patience, and balance in the pressures they face, and bravery to build structures and systems which justly serve all your children. Give them delight in the learners before them and fill up their cup each day. God of manna, miracles, and mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for health and wholeness, fun and growth, surprise and amazement for this school year ahead, knowing you will hold us all the way through. God of manna, miracles, and mercy, hear our prayer. God of restoration, bring healing and wholeness to all who cry to you. Where pain is sharp, bring a sense of comfort and relief. Where grief runs deep, bring your tender mercy. Care for those on our hearts. God of manna, miracles, and mercy, hear our prayer. God of every generation, we remember with thanksgiving all who have completed their baptismal journeys. Strengthen us in our baptismal calling to serve you faithfully until our journeys end. God of manna, miracles, and mercy, receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen.
God does many things through our offerings. Your gifts support the time and safe space for counseling ministry. Please stand. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set, set this table, table with, with your, your very self, self and, and called us to the feast of plenty. plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for just a moment. For those who are receiving communion at home, please take your bread. 
This is the body of Christ given for you. And now your cup. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The table is ready. Come and receive.
The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go with God.